Hello, 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 South Africa. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Happy Friday. You know, it's gotten to that time of the month where everyone's going, uh, hello, where is summer? It is taking its time, but we are going to be gliding you into the weekend effortlessly and with so much fun. So, every generation has people that usher in a new wave of thoughts and ideas. Now, these people become pioneers in their field-changing societies, norms and perceptions for the better. Now, today on the show, we have the honor of chatting to a pioneer in the world of television, actor, writer, and producer, Florence Masebe, who has been in the game for more than 20 years and is no stranger to the loft. I cannot wait to chat to her, and we've got such an interesting conversation going on. Plus, we chat to Mix Blouse, a gender non-conforming rapper who is changing the music industry in South Africa as we know it through their individuality, wild creativity, and edgy style. And later, of course, we meet up with up-and-coming jazz musician Charlotte Dixon, who is currently working on her first uh, studio single, and she was rehearsing earlier in the loft, and I cannot tell you how insanely beautiful her voice is. I almost mistook her for a bird or an angel. Now remember, you can hit us up on our social media platforms throughout the show and share your thoughts with us. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express. Comment on our Facebook page and call Pally in the kitchen. She's waiting for your dial. Hi, my name is Pally Satembe and we've made it to a Friday. So Chef Kim, should we give them a Friday shimmy? Let's do it. One, two, one, two. Go. Oh! Hey. <laughs> and Chef Kim and I are obviously matching. You sound the dresses like I like. I like that. I love it. It's so, following our, our, our group name from last week for our band. I think they're starting to style us already. And now we've already come up with choreography. So this is legitimately a thing now. Now, I don't know anyone who doesn't like a good waffle. or Maybe it's just me. Chef Kim obviously has put together amazing re recipes for us. Mm. Chef Kim, what can we expect today? It's Heritage Month. Mm. So the peppermint tart is actually a South African, like, love dessert. So I thought, how can we like elevate the peppermint tart? And I was like, obviously, put it in a waffle. Peppermint tart waffle. Looks it's, amazing. It's, it's gonna, and it tastes next level. Even Promise. better. Promise. Can't wait to dig into that. Now, Mix Blouse is one of very few gender non-conforming rappers in South Africa whose music reflects their character. What makes Mix Blouse a breath of fresh air is that they offer a new take on music by fusing hip hop, kwaito and go music together, making them trend-setting one of the waves in South Africa. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Your visuals and your music video are just unbelievable. Thank you, it was fun to shoot. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. What was the concept and also what's the song about? Because isn't it Puku Puku? It's Puku Puku is it an idiot. idiot. Yes. I knew that. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so the track is basically about um, how in, in public spaces, women and queer people, um, their agency tends to be taken away. So the idea with the video was to take these weird looking people and to put them in spaces that you wouldn't expect them to be. Um, like it's a fish and chip shop, it's a TV shop, um, and we just being there, being weirdos and yeah. kind of asserting our agency in those spaces. Because why should people like feel weirded out by that? It's actually beautiful, it's really creative. I'm, I'm, I don't know if everyone thinks it's beautiful, but we're doing it anyway. Do you know who you reminded <laughs> me of actually in the uh -huh. music video when I was watching it? Like the way you move and you kind of go into this, like this transient state. You remind me of Skunk Nancy. Do you remember okay, Skunk Nancy? Yeah, like someone from, else has yeah? said that to me before. You are very Skunk Nancy and it's so hot. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Thank you, I appreciate that. You are super creative. Did you do all the direction and the styling of your own music video? Um, so what happened is I worked um, with Jack Figgins, who was the director on, on, the, on the video. 
And um, I sort of just told him that um, I need to have this group of weird people in spaces that they wouldn't yeah. be expected to be. Yeah. But he sort of came up with um, where we're going to shoot and all of that. Yeah. And um, Peter, who was the stylist, um, sort of came up with all the outfits and how we should it's look great. and all it's of so that. So it was well done. a very collaborative effort. Yeah, yeah it's visually amazing. Thank and you. the sun's great, of course. <laughs> and now you. you've got such a great story. You've got such a great tale because... Like, you're an amazing musician now. Thank you. But if one has to follow your journey, you know, when your name comes up, if I have to speak to a lot of the girls in the office and people that I respect and who are well-read, you are so celebrated as a writer <laughs> because you've got this ability to kind of mould yourself into the voice of whatever the topic is that you're writing about. Yeah. So if you're speaking about hard-hitting current affairs and politics, yeah. you've got that way of... Writing so eloquently, but making it understandable. Yeah. And then when you're writing about fashion, it's just so amazing. <laughs> I'm glad you went and read about that. <laughs> no, but what is your, like, you, you're, you are a seriously talented writer. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I went to journalism school, so yeah. I guess that has something to do with it. Um, but writing, I think, is the only talent I think I have. I don't know. Maybe I have others that I haven't discovered. Um, but the reason why I studied journalism to begin with is I'm a very curious person. Yeah. And I realized very early on in high school that language is, is what I was good at. Yeah. Um, and I became a journalist of the varsity. And um, the one thing for me, especially with culture journalism, I sort of felt like whenever I read culture journalism, people use these big words, these fantastic Yeah, it's inaccessible. Ways. It's inaccessible. And, and it, it, may, it isolates it because then you don't... Yeah. Like for me, like for the, you that was culture journalism, for me it's when I read about politics or yeah. current affairs. Yeah. Um, it's too like jargon economic stuff. It's too jargon. <laughs> yeah. So I start reading it, I don't understand what they're saying, so I stop reading. Yeah, so, so that was the thing for me as well. I, I yeah. would read like maybe a piece about an artist's exhibition. And after reading the piece, I'm like, I have no idea what I've just read. So it okay. was important for me to, when I'm writing, to yeah. make it understandable, to, because you're explaining something yeah. to a layman and you're using jargon, it kind of doesn't make any sense. But it's not even to a layman. Like, educated people yeah, are not I'm, bothered with, like, fancy ex or, Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, if you are putting a message across and the reader doesn't get what you're saying, it's pointless. The message is lost. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, and that, is, that absolutely comes through in your writing. You are yeah. unbelievable. I try to do the same thing in the music as well. I hope you are still writing, but yes. now I want to hear, what was your crossover from writing, fashion, blogging, newspapers, journalism, into the music world? Um, I sort of became frustrated with the newsroom. Um, and, you know, I took some time off. Is it heated in the newsroom? I can imagine it's quite tense. Yeah, but what was frustrating for me, I, I kind of felt like, because um, at the time I was working as an entertainment journalist, and I kind of felt like more than the interest in the content of people who work in, in, in entertainment, mm. the newsroom is more interested in their lives. And I'm not interested in people's lives, I'm interested in what they do. Yeah. So that kind of became frustrating yeah. for me to get to the yeah. newsroom and it's like, yeah, what's the latest gossip? Tabloid doesn't make somebody's profession. 100%. Yeah. Um, so that became very frustrating for me, which was a blessing in disguise because during my time off, I got to think about things and what it is that I'm passionate about. And music was the answer. And um, I've been pursuing that for the past three years now. And, I mean, you're amazing at it. You Thank are you. so talented, literally, in every field that you pursue. Thank you. And I can't wait for your performance a little bit later. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> so after the ad break, I went to Johannesburg to meet with Moby Dixon. It's great. Winner Home, South Africa's premier design and decor reality show, is back. And this year, we're coming to you from the breathtaking part of lifestyle estate in Somerset West, developed by Baldwin Properties. Follow three talented design duos as they transform three white box penthouse apartments into fully decorated luxury homes, one of which you could win. My name is Koketo Marole. My name is Rekupile Belebesi. She saw me, I saw her. 
together. Magic. Now we're here. Magic. And my name is Nicholas Smith. My name is Kehumila Mate. We're not here to play games. No games to play here. 150% or nothing. My name is Sinead Turner. I'm Melissa Westhazen. We're so excited to showcase what we're capable of. So stay tuned. Watch the beautiful properties come to life as the design drama unfolds and stand a chance to win the biggest prize on South African television, your very own dream home. Catch Winner Home from Thursday, 20 September at 7.30 p.m. only on SABC3. The stage is yours. Winner Home, proudly brought to you by Capitec and Private Property. Grand Prize Luxury Penthouse Apartment by Bowen Properties. NL, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hey, come on, tell me not, baby. Come on, yeah. Hey, hey. Don't say a chola. Hey, don't say a tamana. Don't say a vile vile say a chola. Hello, my Kashira. Hey, tell me not say a chola. Don't say a tamana. Don't say a vile vile say a chola. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Now, Jeannie recently caught up with DJ producer Moby Dixon at his home to hear all about his family and his latest album title, 10 Steps Forward. DJ producer Moby Dixon is one of Mzanzi's top house DJs with a knack for consistently producing chart-topping hits. Hi, hey, how are you? Good. good, and you? Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us in your home. I believe it's the first time you're opening up the doors to our cameras. It took some convincing, uh, you know, with the wife. You know, she's a very private person, um, very opposite of me. But decided to welcome you guys in our home. Uh, welcome. But you're originally from the Eastern Cape. What made you decide to move to Gauteng? When I decided to really 
pursue the music industry seriously, you know, decided to come back this side and station myself this side. So it only made sense uh, because, I mean, I had already met the love of my life and she was this side and uh, we decided to settle this side. How is married life? I think last year you got married, you had a baby, all in one year. I don't think you've slept for a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite a hectic time, you know. Uh, baby in Feb and then getting married in April. It's really a great blessing, you know, to, to be able to be blessed with such a beautiful baby boy and to have someone, you know, who I can take on as a life partner, you know. And your home is so beautiful. So when you put it together, was that also a collaborative effort? We combine ideas together, man. Of course, I'm the technical guy, you know. I'm in charge of all the, the appliances and all the gadgets and she has more of the eye for beautiful things. I mean, she did choose me. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's really a collaborative effort and especially, of course, you know, the LG aircons, which have really added a nice touch to the home, you know, uh, both from an aesthetic point of view and they are really good machines, you know, from yeah. heating and cooling, yeah, so it's been great. I do like your air cons, they're as cool as you are. Tell us a little bit about the LG Art Cool series of air conditioners installed in this house. The LG air conditioners installed in this house are our premium Art Cool type air conditioners that incorporate the dual inverter technology that we have. How does this technology differ from that of your competitors, for example? This type of air conditioner incorporates the dual cool inverter technology, which is far different from anybody else, and that is what saves up to 70% in your electricity costs. So the aircon heats and cools. So this one is as cool as Moby, but it's also as hot as him. It's more efficient to use an air conditioner to warm up a room, you know, as opposed to an electric bar heater or underfloor heating or, or an oil heater. A bar heater can use a one kilowatt of electricity and only give you one kilowatt of heating out, where an air conditioner can give you up to three and a half kilowatts of heating out. That's perfect for winter, but speaking about heat, I can hear some hot beats coming from Moby Studio, so I'm gonna go and have a look and see what he's doing. Me Cheers. <laughs> Already having won a Metro FM award as well as a Sama, Moby Dixon is not planning on slowing down and is set to release his new fifth studio album titled 10 Steps Forward celebrating his 10th year of making music. The best room in the house. Yes, yes, welcome, welcome. <laughs> this is where all the magic happens. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you've had such a sensational career, spanning over 10 years, and now you're bringing out an album to commemorate that. It's been quite a journey, you know, uh, filled with a lot of ups and downs. Uh, mostly ups and I mean uh, 10 years is no child's play you know so I decided to celebrate it with an album you know. I can't wait to hear it I'm a huge fan of house music and apparently on your album you're collaborating with like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the people on this album you know are people that I'm a big fan of their work you know and I really wanted them to be part of this journey you know so they all represent you know the different textures you know the different feel that they bring you know the likes of Shekana you know on the soulful tip, you know, you chase some things, I've got Tira, you know. Let's take a look at these past 10 years. I mean, such a brilliant career. What have been some of your pinch yourself moments where you've gone, mm, these are my highlights? When I won uh, Best Dance Album, you know, at the Metro FM Awards, and recently now when I won my first Summer Awards, you know, after 10 years in the game, your music makes me so happy. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me on a dance floor. I'm nice and fit because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how awesome is Moby Dixon? And that was the first interview that he's ever had in his home, so we're very grateful for him to let us in. All right, now, it was 2016 when Mix Blau started rapping over beats whilst in Bangkok. Soon after posting uh, their material on SoundCloud, they started getting booked at prominent clubs and festivals all over the country. And today, they will be performing one of their most popular songs to date. We present to you, Mix Blau. Hey. Come on, hey. Tell him in a baby. Come on, hey. Lale, lale, hey, yeah. 
Cape Town, where can your fans come I'm and find you? I'm performing in Cape Town tonight at the Raptor Room. Um, amazing. Please come through if you can. Yeah, Cape Tolians, <laughs> go visit the Raptor Room and of course see an amazing performance. Yeah. Well done. That was Thank so, you. so good. It. Thank you. All right, when we return, we're going to be back in the kitchen with the fabulous Pali, but we're going to take a quick break because I need a little lip gloss. <laughs> <laughs>
Get ready. The face of cybercrime is changing. And so are we. We are smarter. We take charge. We are in control. We are brave, innovative, everywhere. We are Sabrek. is a thick, creamy mass your family will love. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Now, everyone in SA loves a good peppermint crisp fridge tart, but today we're taking a spin on this localist liquor dessert and turning it into a peppermint crisp waffle made with Clover Amasi. It doesn't get any better than this. You simply have to try this at home. And to do that, SMS Clover to 33650 to get this recipe. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50 each and no free SMSs apply. Clem, you had me at Peppermint Crisp. Where do we begin? And it's so easy. Again, I think all the recipes this week have been very easy, yes. right? Yeah. Yesterday I was actually going through the rocky road on the way home. I was like, I could really do this. Yeah. So I hope it's that easy it's today. It's even easier, even easier. Okay, cake flour. To that, we're going to add some eggs. I'm going to ask you to start mixing it ready for me. Cool. And get that in there. Then to that, some corn flour. Yeah. All right. Can get, um, oh. I'm, I'm making a mess. Up. Corn flour. Oh, did I miss on you? Sorry. In the kitchen. No, I did. Okay. <laughs> and then we've got some brown sugar. Yeah. I like a brown sugar sticks to everything. It's the best. It is the best. Just like that. My grandmother used to love brown sugar. I think she thought it tasted different. And it kind of does. Ah, it does. Eh? It tastes fudgy and nutty. Nutty, yeah. Definitely. And to that, Clover Amasi. Our hero and secret weapon for today's dish. It is. And it gives the, like, oh, I love when it also clumps like that. Mm. Um, it gives the waffle such a nice texture, mm. which is what you want. Okay. I like what you're about to do, though. That's the next ingredient. You want to do it? I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a also... mind reader. How many splodges? One. One, two. I said one, and you got to. <laughs> It's okay. Now we've got two little crumbs of vanilla. It's great. It's great. <laughs> then what's a peppermint toss without some caramel treat that's going yes. in there? Just starting, like that. Starting to thicken up already. Did you ever like eat it out the can? I did. Yeah. And I always used to get smacked on the hand for it. Did you? Yep. Kind yeah, of we won't do that. Yeah, we won't do that. You're allowed to eat out the can if you want to. <laughs> and then in go the peppermint crisps, just like that. Nice. Are we missing anything? Are we missing anything? Let's look. I don't How about think a little so. bit of olive pride? Yeah. Just a little bit. Okay. Kind of gives a nice little sheen to the waffle as well. Working over you, so sorry. Okay, no problem. And drizzle. Just like that. Just like that. That's an awesome batter. I actually think we maybe added too much caramel treat. You know what? It doesn't matter. There's no such thing. There's I no such thing. Don't mind a little caramel, a little extra caramel. There we go. Perfect. In our perfectly hot waffle iron, I'm ready for this. Oh, so you scoop it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lefty. I'm going to use my right hand. Okay. I'll be okay. I didn't know about that. You're I'm left a, I'm a lefty, yeah. I've got... So you had to use, like, those special scissors growing up? I, I, I'm not... I'm, I'm like... I wasn't, like, a difficult lefty. That's crazy. Okay. I can, I can work with, like, a right-handed scissors. A little ambidextrous. I am. I can chop with both hands. You Kim, see why are you such that? an overachiever? You I always make to. me look bad. No, no, no. It's fine. I'm sure Twitter's even going to say you did the shimmy better than Kim. No, well, Kim did it better no, than you. guys. What do you think? Let us know. I mean, look at that. I actually just messed on the counter intentionally just to like... <laughs> just to show that you're not as perfect I'm as, human. as it seems. <laughs> okay. So really cool. This one's really great. So we actually make it two waffles at the same time. Perfect. Oh, but nice. here's one I made a little earlier. It comes out super decadent. Also, what's cool in there, there's chocolate and there's caramel in there. So there's a lot of sugar, which mm. is great because it gives you the nice crust on the outside. Yeah. But for someone like me who's not too much of a sweet fan, uh -huh. how do I balance it out? To make it a little um, less rich, I don't. You don't need to add that much <laughs> caramel to it. Okay. Actually, you can take the caramel out and just work with the brown sugar. That's okay, the chocolate that's in there. Mm. Then, uh, the reason I say that's okay is because we've even gone a little step further. We made a salted caramel sauce to go over it. Yeah, my so goodness. It's fine. So it's fine. They take, it out, they take it out the actual batter and just yes. use it on the top. Mm. Then, we're going to go with a little bit of these little toffee treats. Okay? I love toffee these treats. Are actually, we actually melted these down. A little bit of salt, a little bit of cream. And that's how we actually got our sauce, by the way. So easy. Don't be standing over All the All weekend, I'm going to be running on that treadmill with your face at the bottom, <laughs> at the end. And I'm just going to be like, oh my gosh, Kim, I hate you so much for this. It's okay. It's, it's fine. We only do this every day of the week. 
<laughs> yeah, just every now and then. Just it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> every but, now and then, every day, five days a week. <laughs> and sometimes on the weekends. A little bit of that sauce, just like that. Mm, okay. Nice. This is, it's decadent. Very. It's Friday, yo. It's okay. It's okay. Then finish off with a little bit of cream. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it was low fat cream. No, it's not. Is it full fat? It's like double fat cream. Oh, I love it. I also love my double thick yogurt, so. Yes. I can... And if you want it to be that healthy, put some yogurt on it. It's not <laughs> going to be the same. But this is, guys, this is the way. This is how you waffle on a Friday. Mm. Look at that guy as well. Extra toppings. Clem, I think this is how you waffle every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Done. Perfect. This is a fantastic, this is a fantastic recipe for Heritage Month. SMS Clover 233650. Remember, SMSs are charged at 150 and no free SMSs apply. And in case you missed any of the steps, here's a quick recap. Simple, super simple. Super simple. Made with love by Clover. You know, I like to set an example of health and well-being, but my body's a temple, but I'm seriously, seriously plagued by this plate of absolute deliciousness. Now, we are definitely activating the weekend mode this Friday. After the break, we have jazz musician Charlotte Dixon, who's going to perform a sultry jazz number for us. Massey is a thick, creamy mass your family will love. Made with love by Clover. Are you the smoothest fan to Zanzi's biggest stars? Prove it by entering SABC One's new Tropica Smooth Fan TV show. By Tropica, follow the entry details on pack, select your favorite celeb who you know best, and you can compete on the live TV quiz show. And also stand a chance to win thousands of daily prizes and a share of one million rand. Enter and catch the Tropica Smooth Fan Quiz Show on SABC One, Fridays at 6 p.m.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Now, Charlotte Dixon found her voice and her passion for music at the tender age of 10. She has already performed in some of the biggest festivals in South Africa among such prominent musicians. And her dreams are only starting to come true as she launches her solo career next month. You've got a lot ahead of you. <laughs> I do. But you've also gone through a lot. I have. To get to where you are now. Congratulations on all, on all your you. work. Where did your love for jazz start? Well, it started with my father. Um, we used to call him the rock and roll pastor in Peter Maritzburg. Mm. Um, he <laughs> loved Jonathan Butler, Norman Brown, all of those kinds of guys. And he got me into jazz music. And I believe you also come from a very... Baptist, charismatic church background. Yes. Were you one of those front lead singers at the age of 10, just belting it out in the choir? No, more like. Oh, you know, with the one stomp. Of, mm, <laughs> one of those, that, that's my history. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm sure you've come through so many challenges, overcome so many challenges to go solo. Yeah. But you've, because you've collaborated with a lot of people along the way, obviously. Who are some of the people that you've collaborated with? So I've collaborated with uh, a Cape Town stalwart, um, Alvin Dyers, George Werner, mm. um, Frank Paco, mm. also uh, Mark Franzman, Melanie Scaltz, a lot of really Big. talented mm. and amazing, you know, Cape Town musicians that have since left the shores, but they've left an imprint on me. That's amazing, and we certainly see you such a well-rounded individual, and that voice, I heard her practicing earlier, and wow, it's straight power. But I touched on some challenges. What are, how did you overcome such challenges, and what have been the biggest things that you found, look, needs to be changed, and made it easier for the next generation to be ushered in? I think the most important thing is people need to find themselves. To find your voice, you need mm -hmm. to find yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lot of work that's involved there. But I think once you've got that, and it took me a long time, um, I decided to get out of music for two years and did absolutely n no music. Wow. Because my voice had changed. Um, and so find, being comfortable with that and being comfortable with the person that I am becoming as I grow older, as mm. I experience new and different things, mm. has influenced what I like, the sounds I like, the lyrics that I like to write. But I'm sure in those two years, if you're anything like me, you're a busy bee. You always want to be producing content, amazing work, especially if it's your passion. Definitely was busy doing that all behind the scenes, writing and collaborating and brainstorming with a lot of people just wasn't on stage. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. You're about to perform an amazing song, one of my favorites. But let the viewers in on why you chose a classic to perform today. I think it's because the song, it's a song about longing. Mm. And I think sometimes whether you're longing for to be in a space, to belong somewhere, uh, that person that you love, it doesn't matter what the longing is. Mm. It's, it's, it's a song that, that talks about how you can overcome that. Um, Ray Charles was longing to go back to Georgia, yes. um, to his hometown that he was, he, he was not able to go back to. Mm. Um, and so that's the premise for the, for the lyrics, but it can be translated into any life situation. Yeah. You know, you can, get, you can overcome your hurdles, because eventually he went back. Mm. You carry such emotion through your voice. And not many artists are able to really communicate that in what they're trying to push, the message that that song's trying to push. You've also got an amazing thing that you're backing, a benefit concert. Yes, um, on the 13th of October, uh, it's my official coming out party, but also um, we are doing it in collaboration with Women of Hope Trust, mm. um, which is a, an amazing organization that um, has taken on um, the homeless and they wash them, prepare them, call mm -hmm. the ambulance when it's time for them to go for their doctor's appointments, feed, feed them, find mm -hmm. accommodation, housing for them. So it's a, and it's empowerment of women at the same time. So it's a, it's a beautiful organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to be collaborating with them on well, this. Well, Amanda, to you, you're doing amazing work. You're backed by a very talented pianist. And I'm very excited to hear that voice again. <laughs> uh, thank Her, you. Yeah, Charlotte Dixon, do you take the stage with your amazing accompanist. Play, uh, you guys are going to be performing Ray Charles' song, Georgia. Back to Georgia. Enjoy.
What an amazing voice. That's that talent I was talking about. Onwards and outwards and congratulations for Thank you finally so much. living your dream. Yes. Now after the break, we've got artist and African storyteller Florence Masebe sitting down with us. Welcome back to Afternoon Express this Friday afternoon. Now, I mean, yeah, you are just 
a whole, whole other story. I, I can, I could jump across the couch and kiss you right now. Welcome back to the loft. So the Performance Protection Amendment Bill is at the tip of the tongue of everyone who works in front of the camera, in particular actresses and actors. And you just made a submission to Parliament yesterday. How did that go? And, and yeah, how did it go? What happened yesterday? Start from the beginning. Well, yesterday was the first day of uh, uh, oral submissions, public submissions. Okay. To the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Trade and Industry, which is... Were there a whole bunch of other people putting through what they wanted to amend? Absolutely. Okay. So, so you, you had um, organisations that represent producers. Funny enough, the, there was... I can't say it because it's a French thing, FIAF, but it's really the International yeah. um, Federation of P Independent Producers. Yeah. Yes. Um, they make they were that even sound there. fabulous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go, something like that. Yeah. Um, they were represented. But what mattered to me was representations from the PMA, the Personal Managers Association, mm -hmm. who manage local actors, audiovisual performance yeah. in essence and uh, representation by the South African Guild of Actors. Then I did an individual presentation. Um, another individual presentation was done by actress Nambi Tampumlwana. Why did the current bill need to be amended? What needs to change? How does it currently stand? And what do you want it to stay? So the original version of this bill is a page and a half, not much. It was... Uh, drafted and passed in 1967. You were nowhere near this earth. Neither was I, by the way. <laughs> no, no, no. You were on your way somewhere in, in God's plan. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but it's like so, so long ago. None of us were yeah. alive yeah. when it came on. You know, mm. um, Nambita did mention, she was like, the bill is as old as I am. What is this thing? Wow. Yeah. When this bill was passed, there was no television in South Africa. Wow. Remember television Just came to this outdated. country? I'm telling you. Television in this country only came in 1976 fully. Yeah. Um, I don't even want to know what day the first television drama was broadcast yeah. on SRE Gar. Mm. You know, so we're, here we are now in 2018 being supposedly legislated by something that was made long before people knew that today you would be doing work that ends up on so many other platforms except yeah. television itself. It's beyond outdated. So, what, like, are people, like, if somebody makes some TV and it gets rebroadcast, do artists not benefit from that? Is that the state of the bill? The, the current um, scenario, the status quo now, is mm. that there is an agreement that was made in the late 80s, I believe, mm. between Power. Power is dead. Mm. Power was the Performance Arts Workers' Equity. Okay. Um, it was the union for actors that existed back in the day. Power negotiated with the then SABC to say you cannot work and take our work in perpetuity without us getting anything. Yeah. They um, negotiated a small residual, and this would go into every standard contract with freelancers in the country. Yeah. But even that, people have not been paid. I, I don't even know how to claim for that. And it's not because I'm ignorant, no. illiterate, or uninformed. It's because whatever little bit that SABC must give to actors, they have made it impossible for people to claim. What is your personal story? Why did you feel that it was now your time to go and fight for this bill? The, the scenario in South Africa is that we're very badly unionized. We're fortunate to have Saga, which has very limited membership. Yeah. Not every belongs, everybody belongs to it. Yeah. Um, we have SIFSA, which got started but didn't quite take off as a representation of people in the arts. So we really do not have a voice. Yeah. And up until we have a big unified voice, it's going to take a few brave voices, because you have to be brave yeah. to speak yeah. up, because when you speak up, they blacklist you and they don't cast you ever again. Yes. Yeah. So you need to take those chances. But you've got to speak up, because if we do not, it's going 
to be detrimental, yeah. not for us today. What mm. I did yesterday was not for Florence Masebe. No. It may be for some of people that came before me who are mm. old, and I'm hoping I insisted in Parliament that when we do pass this bill, because they must pass this bill, yes. it has to be retrospective. But, you, but your intro, sorry to interrupt you, Ms. Bidart. Your, your intro was so powerful because you said for actors and performers now and for those that have departed, why was it important for you because to, to include Because I have been in this industry long enough to watch legends. Yeah. People I respect, people that came before me, I'm tearing up just thinking about it, died poor. Yeah. having nothing and created such amazing after work. after creating such amazing works that yeah. till today you watch in the mornings on your favorite SABC yeah. channel yes I have to ask because you're getting so passionate about this so the outfit that you wore yesterday I at first you posted about it and you said oh, I'm wearing a, a, um, a hand-me-down and yes. I thought why is that even an issue because like you, you can't uh, girls you can rock a dress more than once yeah. it's not a fashion faux pas but then when I carried on reading please tell me about that hand-me-down because but that you was... see you've got to declare your hand-me-down <sighs> when you're hand-me-down that's not hand-me-down that's vintage that is hand-me-down supreme because oh. I can brag no 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 I can I channeled and carried with me the spirit of Mama Miriam Makeba yesterday. Amen. Because I wore that hand-me-down straight out of her closet. Yeah. Wow. What, what an amazing moment. Especially speaking of those that passed, it's kind of come mm. full circle, making the standing so firm in that parliament. But what's the next step? What can yeah. we expect? What, hap what needs to happen now? So one of the things... <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. that came out was that the parliamentary uh, portfolio committee members were very clear with that. They understand the plight of actors. Mm. Two, they realized there were urgent issues beyond what is in the bill yeah. that need to be taken care of. Yeah. And we have pleaded with them to say, it is not just the DTI portfolio committee that needs to take care of this. They must get together with arts and culture with uh, communications, treasury, labor, and call us back so that mm. we can tell them the real stories of the plight of yeah. actors in this country. We cannot continue. A good friend of mine and great actor, Siloma Gekangube, mm. said to me once, our names are huge. Our earnings are the opposite. Mm. Mm. We can't continue to be that. Mm. You know what? You 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 certainly you know you planted the seed yesterday, and it's going to grow. But you made history, mm. and I think so many people are going to be forever grateful to you. Thank you, thank you for taking that step. It was brave. It's courageous. It's honourable. You're amazing. Thank I you. Thank you. Wow, yeah. what a woman! Now to take you into the weekend, we have another soulful performance by Charlotte Dixon with Summertime. <laughs> The cotton is high You know your dad is rich And your mama's good looking So hush little baby Don't you cry One of these mornings You're gonna rise
they gonna stand favorite audition songs growing up. Thank you so much for that amazing contribution to our Friday. Your favorite audition song growing up? Yes, I was I was a, a theater kid. So, you know, you always had to have that power song. Okay, so, our whoop, guy's whoop. been demiked. No, no, no. Give us a little acapella, acapella campali. Yes. It's Friday, it's Friday. Summertime. <laughs> that's that's as far. I, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> tough act to follow. <laughs> Join us again on Monday as we continue our conversation on infertility on Mommy Mondays. Plus, we profile an up and coming A4 piece band reposition. We'll see you then. See you on Monday. Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.